The gap is closing between what you can dream and what you can make. In the past, there were so many barriers to entry. Gatekeepers holding the keys, technology holding us back, and our limiting beliefs telling us it's not possible. Now we can self-publish, we can make without limitation, and our minds have opened to unlock our unlimited potential. Nothing can stop us now. Hi, I'm Matthew Encina, and in this video, I'm going to share my thoughts on the future of creativity. I'm going to highlight our biggest challenges moving forward and share some new tools I've picked up so you can supercharge your creative brain and take control of your future. In full disclosure, Adobe is sponsoring this video so I can share my thoughts with you on the subject. I've been a creative professional for over 15 years. In my time as a designer, animator, and content creator, I've seen our industry change rapidly and evolve dramatically. The tools are better, education is easily becoming accessible online, and the time it takes to go from idea to tangible solution is faster than it's ever been. It's the greatest time to be alive as creative human beings. So how do we take advantage of all this momentum? How can you become a contributor to the future instead of a victim to it? I flew out to New York to see what the industry leaders at Adobe's 99U conference had to say. I go to a lot of conferences. Unfortunately, most of the ones I attend are full of inspirational work and stories, but lack any real actionable knowledge I can apply. My experience at 99U was not what I expected. It was actually full of highly valuable workshops which gave me a ton of radically new ideas to implement into my process and at our workplace. The theme this year was creative future. When I first heard this, I thought right away, technology. While there were some interesting talks in emerging tech, the most important message I heard was on the role that creatives play at this very important time in history. But first, let's start by talking about the big challenges we're facing in this rapidly changing world and what might be holding us back from our full potential. Challenge number one, the robots are coming. In fact, they're already here. In one of my sessions with Brian Collins, he said that he's seen a lot of early demos of artificial intelligence used in the design field. This AI can quickly do the task of most junior designers which is to create tons of iterations. This means the role of designers will change dramatically in the near future. No, it doesn't mean we're all getting replaced. Rather, it means the types of skills we need to bring to the table will need to be very different. Brian Collins said, we have to do two things in this new future, and I'm paraphrasing. One, we have to dream up a future that is bold, ridiculous, and unexpected. And two, we have to bring our human touch to everything we do. Today, the robots we're programming are only good at recognizing patterns and performing the task we tell them to do. But as creative human beings, we have a unique ability to do things robots cannot. We can connect the dots between wildly different things. We can express love and emotions, and we can dream up things that don't exist yet. For that reason, we have to constantly break away from convention and push ourselves to stretch and flex our creative imaginations. Which brings me to the next challenge we face. Challenge number two, we should be innovating, not iterating. Over the past decade, we've seen a rapid development in technology which has massively disrupted so many industries. Netflix and Blockbuster, Uber and taxis, Amazon and bookstores, e-commerce, grocery stores, well, Amazon and everything. And there are many more industries to count and many more to come. I know it sounds terrifying, but how do we prepare for disruption? I sat in on an amazing workshop given by the former head of innovation and creativity at Disney, Duncan Wardle. What I learned is that we have to think big. No, really big and we have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. The problem is most organizations and businesses operate with the agenda to make incremental improvements rather than massive change. That's because as we grow older, we become more and more reductive and rigid in our way of thinking. By the time we're working adults, we've become preconditioned to eliminate possibilities before we even explore them. We become risk averse instead of risk takers. And that's the core of the problem. We're thinking too small. And disruption is coming our way, if it hasn't already. 
We have to become expansive thinkers and practice growing our imagination. Duncan shared some good tools on how to do this, which I'll share later in the video. Challenge number three, we're distracted all the time. If you're still watching this video, at some point in it, you probably got distracted. Your phone buzzed, an email popped into your inbox, or you got a bright red notification on your screen. We are the most distracted generation that has ever lived. At 99U, I went to a presentation given by cognitive neuroscientist, Dr. Sahar Youssef. In her talk, she shared countless studies that have shown the detrimental impact that some of our favorite technologies have had on our lives, specifically on how it affects our creativity and productivity. Here are a few statistics that were pretty alarming to hear. In the modern office setting, the average person gets distracted every 90 seconds. A survey showed that we only get about three and a half hours of productive time out of an eight hour workday. And multitasking, it's a myth. It actually results in taking twice as long than if you were to just focus on completing one task at a time. What's the result of all this? Well, we can't focus on solving big complex tasks, our creativity and innovation goes to waste, and we're tired all the time, operating on the edge of burnout. <sighs> I know, I know, things look grim, and I just spent the last five minutes being a downer. My bad. The funny thing is, I'm highly optimistic about the future. That's because during the 99U event, along with learning about the big challenges we faced, I picked up a bunch of new tools to address them. Here's how we can reclaim our productivity and expand our creative minds so that we can have a valuable place in the future. Tool number one, focus sprints. Our brain is our most powerful asset. It is the processor of all of our creativity. Yet these days, we are drowning in distraction. So how do we regain our productive time? Introducing the focus sprint. I learned this concept from Dr. Sahar Yusuf's talk at 99U. What is a focus sprint? It is a 90 minute chunk of uninterrupted, distraction-free, concentrated work. The goal is to achieve sustainable peak performance so you can focus on your core priorities effectively and let your body and brain work efficiently over the long term. Step one, turn off all distractions. Go to a quiet place, close your doors, or go to a place where no one knows you, like a coffee shop. Turn off all your notifications, close your emails, hide your phone from sight if you can help it. Step two, assign a goal for the sprint. Be realistic and create a goal you'd like to accomplish in the end of the sprint. The second part of this is to break down your goal into subtasks. For example, my goal was to write the script and my subtask were to spend 30 minutes on an outline and 15 minutes filling in each section. Step three, set a timer for 90 minutes and go. The first time you do this, it will be awkward and hard to start. You'll immediately be tempted to reach for your phone, but stick with it. Because once you build momentum, it will keep growing. Step four, rest for 20 minutes. In the 90 minutes of sprinting, your brain ascends into a high performance mode. This increases your stress and your brain needs to go through a healing response. To give your brain some downtime to replenish, Dr. Youssef suggested going for a walk and getting some vitamin D in the sun. You could close your eyes for five minutes, shutting off all stimulation. Or you can stare at something green, which apparently calms you down. All of these will help lower your stress levels and prepare you for more sustained focus sprints throughout the day. Step five, repeat. Try and perform as many of these focus sprints during the day. By breaking up your day this way, you'll have sustained energy and focus throughout your workday. I've been personally going through a productivity slump lately. I feel like I've been very busy, yet when I measured my output at the end of the week, seemingly nothing significant was accomplished. So I tried to run a focus sprint the moment I got home and had amazing results. I made room for three sprints in one day and got so much accomplished. I'll be continuing to experiment with this and optimize it for my routines and habits. Tool number two, better brainstorms for expansive thinking. 
Think about your last group brainstorm session. There was probably a few people in the room. One person is taking notes, while several vocal people in the room are shouting out ideas, most of which get shut down immediately by the pessimist in the room. And by the time the session is over, everyone is tired, the ideas are uninspired, and usually nothing happens post-brainstorm because the idea was unclear. Sound familiar? Let me know in the comments below if you have ever experienced this before. So how do we run a brainstorm session that results in big, expansive thinking and is captured in a well-defined way? How can we learn to innovate instead of iterate? Step one, start your brainstorm by setting a well-defined challenge to tackle. The more specific you can make it, the more innovative your ideas will be while maintaining the practicality of its application. Step two, break up the room into small four-person groups. One person facilitates the conversation and records it while the others are participants in the brainstorm. If possible, try and invite in a naive expert, someone not from your department or company. This will add some unorthodox thinking into the mix. Step three, play hot potato with the idea. The facilitator will start by asking the first person to throw out an idea. After they give their answer, the facilitator moves on to the next person to have them add onto the idea. A note here, you cannot shoot anything down in this process. If something doesn't sound feasible during the brainstorm, that's probably your poor imagination kicking in. For the brainstorm, shut off that pessimistic voice and instead adopt the language, yes and meaning you must add to the previous idea to help define it more rather than diverging or shutting it down. This hot potato brainstorm helps ideas expand and grow rather than shrink and diminish. Step four, document the idea in a T-sheet. At the top is the title of your idea. To the left is a concise summary of the concept that clearly tells you what it is. On the right should be a quick sketch or mock-up of the idea. By documenting it this way, you have just created a complete idea. Something that feels real and tangible because it has a title, description, and image to illustrate it. With this, it'll be much easier to relay and communicate your ideas to others. Here's an example of some of the results from the mini brainstorm session Duncan had at the event. The challenge here was, how might we create a new chocolate ice cream product for Valentine's Day geared towards adults? <laughs> We will create a new chocolate Valentine's Day ice cream product. It will come in the shape of three chocolate condoms in a strawberry, raspberry and orange flavour. They will be average in size. They will be contained in a red metallic box which will be heart shaped. They will be sold at $8 in sex shops and department stores year round. Um, round of applause for your volunteers. Using a brainstorm framework like this will help you disrupt your normal river of thinking, get 100% participation from the group, and you'll come up with ideas that might seem off the wall, but it'll help you think about what's possible rather than what isn't. Tool number three, beautiful boredom. Think back to your childhood when we had no devices, lots of free time, and only our imagination to stimulate us. How many games did you come up with? How many stories did you invent for your toys or your environment? Come back to now. Why is it that our best ideas come to us when we're brushing our teeth, taking a shower, or driving our car? That's because in all of those instances, then and now, we were bored, undistracted, and could allow our subconscious brain to work. When we give our brain the time and space, it can thread together seemingly unrelated ideas together and come up with some of our most inventive ideas. So similar to the focus sprints, we want to create an undistracted space. The key difference here is there's no clear objective other than being bored. Step one, turn off all stimuli. Hide your phone, turn off your notifications, music, streaming, just get as far away from your digital distractions as possible. Step two, be bored. Go sit at the park or in your living room. Go have lunch. Just go out there and do something that doesn't involve stimulus from your devices. Step three, let your mind wander. Wherever you're at, just be observant. Let your mind connect dots and string together narratives of your surroundings. You'll be surprised at how creative your mind can be when you adopt a childlike wonder again. Step four, document it. Keep a notepad and pen or pencil nearby. When something enters your mind, jot it down, sketch it out, 
then let your mind drift off and wander again. While this idea isn't anything new, it became very interesting to me once I heard the artist Kyle T. Webster share his stories about invention while being bored. Specifically, his story about beet juice. It was one afternoon, he had just finished his lunch and he was staring at his plate one day, completely bored, and he looked at the unusual pattern left behind from his beet salad. He thought to himself, hmm, that's an interesting texture. He took a photo of it and turned that texture into a brush for Photoshop. He put that brush on sale online and sold $100,000 of that digital brush. I couldn't believe it. And yes, selling Photoshop brushes is actually a thing. To think this idea would not have come to him if he was just there killing time, occupying his headspace with his smartphone and social feeds. Kyle would have missed out on a $100,000 opportunity. It got me to think, how many $100,000 ideas have I missed out on because I don't give my brain the space to be creative, to be bored. This was a huge lesson for me to hear. So I've been applying boredom into as many moments of my daily routine as possible. Whenever I feel the urge to fill my free time with screen time, I keep my phone in my pocket and just remain present. And those are the three tools you can use to help focus your creativity. Since implementing these into my life and process, I've seen some pretty amazing results. The main thing I learned from all of this is we should step away from distractions as much as possible and be more intentional with our time. I just want to thank Adobe for flying me out to 99U. It was an amazing place to learn and gather insights from some of the most innovative minds on the planet. I'd like to leave you with this one closing thought. Creativity is at a high point. Where we go from here is completely up to us. We have everything at our disposal to create any future we dream up. So it's our obligation as designers, as creators, as innovators to make it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any thoughts about the future of creativity or where we might be going or any of the tools that you might enjoy from here, let me know by leaving a comment below. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because it really helps us out. We'll see you in the future.